Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts. We're back on that 1948 Studebaker right rear fender panel. It was originally done by one of my students. All these panels on this car were done by the students. And now we're tuning them up and we're trying to get this all together. And it's going to go to a, a prestigious show. This was way out of whack. It was overdeveloped hugely in here. And if you watch the last video, I took it all out of arrangement and wheeled all the edges. And when you bring the edges up, it appears that the overdevelopment goes down. So we left it there. And I think that was about two weeks ago or so. But now what we're going to do is we're going to put it on the wire form and I'll get it all lined up on the wire form and then we'll show you how it looks. Okay, we got the panel clamped on here. It's, right now, it's a, I would say it's a total disaster. Most people would just throw up their hands and say, that's it, I gotta start over again. But we did get the overdevelopment out, but it's, it's pretty wonky. There's overstretching on the bottom. We'll have to straighten that out. There's a little bit of overstretching right here. The arrangement isn't right. So this is one of the things that baffles students or beginners. You're thinking the panel is just going to go whoop, right perfect, and it doesn't because this panel is really springy. It's not fully developed. It's uh, developed in a, in a regular way. Some piece, part of the panel might be perfect. Another piece, part of the panel is terrible. That's nothing to be afraid of. The trick to this is to figure out exactly where you need to work and, and it's not a message from God to find out where to work. The buck tells you what to do. And this is why I strongly dislike and discourage wood station bucks as much as possible. Because wood station bucks are closed cell systems most of the time. There are some people that they go to the extraordinary step to make things visible. But it's so much easier with... Uh, a wire form buck. Now you can make a wire form buck out of what I typically use quarter inch wire, but now today with the CAD programs and everything, you can cut all the pieces out with a laser cutter or a water jet, and you can snap it together exactly like you do a wood buck. And that's one of the appeals of the wood buck is that uh, it's very easy to assemble and boom, you've got the whole project right in front of you in a couple hours. Whereas a wire form takes a lot of time, is a lot of artistic interpretation, unless you're following a CAD file. In this case, we, this was all artistic interpretation. And uh, one of the first things after, after correcting the overdevelopment of that panel, I have to reorient the panel onto the wire form. And I want to make sure there's a bottom wire here. I wanted to make sure that that covered that bottom wire. I got a wire here in the rear and then also in the front. I have to evenly space it there because these were where welds are going to take place. I've got a little extra material. And then this wraps around and this has to be welded up here. I've got a little extra material on the inner panel that's going to eventually be welded together here. So the situation we had when we first started was this was all bulged out way away from the wires. So now we have a situation where the panel is all over the place. And, and if you look under here, it looks like there's a big gap here. But what has happened is these three wires here, one, two, three, these are pretty straight with a little bit of compound in the middle over here. But then this dives in a little bit, flows into that back tailpiece. So... If you clamp this all down, and I really do need a couple more clamps, we get a couple more clamps on, and I'll show you exactly where we need to do the work and what is telling us is the buck. The buck tells me exactly what I need to do. Okay, here's the clamps. I'll reiterate again. I probably said this a whole bunch of times already, but these squeeze clamps, the best ones available are at Home Depot. With all the inflation we've had, this kept the line at 99 cents. You can't beat them in at that price. It's just the cheapest price around. I've tried everywhere. Home Depot still has them at 99 cents. And you need the rubber to go in here. And best is about half-inch rubber. Track to supply a horse mat. Cut it up with a bandsaw. Does the trick. One little 1032 screw through here. And now you've got a non-marring clamp that has a little bit more uh, spring to it so 
The important thing is clamping this panel down. And this is the beauty again of the wire form because you can easily clamp anywhere. So eventually when this panel is finished, this thing will just go plop right on perfect. Uh, but in the process of development, the panel is all out of whack and uh, it, it will be springy. So you, in order to find out exactly where you need to work, you have to clamp it on and then you have to index it. So I put some tape over here and I'm going to make a little magic marker line on that tape right there and then a corresponding mark here. So I take this off every time and I make sure that those line up because if you move it a quarter of an inch or a half an inch away, you're going to get a totally different reading. Every spot it's hitting, it's up on the high spot here, up, up tall where it's hitting on these wires. Um, that's holding everything up. So uh, oftentimes I tell the student, it's hitting right there. You got to build that out, but you don't build it out exactly just where the wire is. You have to spread the, 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 it out two or three inches on either side. Otherwise, you'll have a little mushroom growing. It'll fit perfectly, but there'll be uh, uh, a bad spot on either side of it. You've got to blend it in. So I'll take a reading. Okay, it's hitting here, here. Those are one, one two, spot, two spots so far that are really kind of bad. And if, if I bring those spots out and also uh, take out some of this waviness, this is overdevelopment here, which I had to do in order to relieve that overdevelopment that was here. I now overdevelop the edge a little bit. And to fix that, we'll 45 that right here without getting into here too much. And that'll take this, what I call a live edge. See how that's got too much material there? So this is all uh, solvable. It's not a problem at all. And every step that we do, it'll get a little bit better. Here I got the panel marked where it's, the wire is hitting on the outside and the inside. And I'm gonna knock those out a little bit. Not a lot, not excessive, because you, you have to do everything in baby steps. So I'm gonna come out a little bit, come out a little bit, and then I'll, I'll wheel it and then, then check it again. But you have to think of the concept of fitting this panel to this situation. And we can do that by seating the panel in this way, seating the panel in at an angle like this, and seating the panel in at an angle like this. Eventually it's going to hit all the wires. But you've got all those different axes to get that to, to seat in. So now we're going to blast that out a little bit. So that's the blending. We're moving it out. This is the epicenter here. We're moving it out a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit there and a little bit there. But you want to uh, have the hardest hits here and, and more of them and less hard and, and, and less of the hits as you come from the epicenter. Because otherwise you're just going to make a mushroom. So uh, we'll, we'll come over here a little bit more. And we'll do this one now. This one is right here. You can actually see it scratching on the, the uh, aluminum right here too. So that's where it's hidden. And you can do this with the, the wheel, but in order to do it with the wheel, you have to go back and forth at such small amounts. It's, re it's, it's really not that efficient to do it that way. The power hammer works really good on a situation like this because the power hammer doesn't care and is doing its work even if you're holding it uh, still on the power hammer. So that's an advantage of the power hammer. So the power hammer, when you're doing it in the power hammer, that's uh, compression working the metal. And this is what I call uh, plastic or elastic working of the metal. And typically the Italians, um, the real old school Italians, they would make this panel 
with just a body hammer and if they needed to develop that spot more they all did a lot of their fine work on just a flat slab of metal that had a really nice ground surface on it so they would just take body hammers and make hundreds and hundreds of, of quick uh, impacts with the body hammer to, to blast that little part of the panel out. So all those methods will yield the results. My general rule is every human task, there's four ways to do everything, and you gotta find a way that works best for you. And it's gotta be uh, economical too. If you have to have a, uh, you know, a million dollars or at the tools in your shop to get the job done, uh, that's not going to, that's not going to fly. All right, so we blasted them out a little bit. Now we want to look at it like this. I call this the horizon view, and we don't want to see two big mushrooms here. So I'm going to put a little bit in here too so this all flows together. All right, so the next step will be wheeling this out. It's just going to smooth all those hammer blows out. And I'm just going to be going like this back and forth until it's pretty smooth. Doesn't have to be perfect at this stage. What we're trying to do is just get that fitting on the wire form better. So there'll be cycles of fitting it on the wire form. We might have to fit it on there 10 times in order to overcome all the stuff that this trauma this panel has went through. So the wheeling is just these little back and forths. And if you just go back and forth, that, that can potentially lead to a problem too, but not until I get it smooth. We're still in the lump lump phase. We're going through there and it's bump, bump, lump, lump. But then to start to smooth out is only a matter of minutes before it smooths back out. And then you have to drag it in so you blend it with the wheel. Now is this light pressure you got? Yeah, this is just light pressure. Just enough to knock the the uh, walnuts down. And navigating through the panel is this little wiggle you have to do, and it just, it just becomes second nature. You don't even think about it. Your brain does it um, by itself, so. It's all pretty simple. If you take your time, go baby steps, you won't make mistakes. It's when you go in large steps, that's where the mistakes kick in. And oftentimes, that's when the students would do stuff, they would go slow, slow, slow at first, even, be, even before a baby step, and nothing was happened. And then they would speed it up a little bit, and then they would take these big giant steps, and then they would get into trouble. And then, then they get into frustration mode. The worst thing is frustration mode. You gotta step back, look at the situation, analyze it, and see what the best step forward is. All right, so we smoothed that out. That all feels pretty good. It's not 100%, but it's pretty good. Now we're gonna fit it onto the buck here. And now when fitting onto the buck, we got a, a couple factors here. Number one, uh, we're, we're stretching the panel, meaning we're adding crown or area to the panel. But we're also bending or arranging the panel. So we want to make sure the panel is arranged properly because it's very easy to get confused by not having the arrangement correct. And right now the arrangement is, isn't correct. It's, it's coming over a little too fast. So I got to take some of that out and see... I can't come down because that arrangement is holding me right now. I got to bring this back and that'll let that slide down an inch or so. So I'm going to take a little bit of that arrangement out with the wheel. This is another nice feature of the wheel is being able to, you just lift up on it on the pull. You're pulling it towards you and you're lifting it up a little bit. And that'll, that'll, 
pop out some of that arrangement. You don't want to go too far. Again, it's baby steps. An English wheel that trained in England is all going to be about tracking patterns and everything. And I do tracking patterns a little bit, but generally I just wheel where I need to wheel. It, the buck tells me where, to, where I need to go. All right, so I got a lot more bend here than I need. I'm going to see if I can get that out. Back on. So I've got my index mark, got that mark, I got it here. I gotta move that forward a little bit. All right, I gotta put a little more bend right here. I, I took maybe too much out right here. So this, this is fighting me, doesn't wanna come around. So uh, there's the, the point where it needs to start to bend somewhere in here. The front, Front is not perfect, but it's it's getting closer here. So this has to come up this way a little bit too. And this is a, a really confusing part is when it doesn't fit perfectly, oftentimes everybody thinks it's the area value that has to be changed, but oftentimes it's really just the arrangement value, meaning we got to bend that more right there. So I pull that down right there. There's no pressure here. I'm just using the wheel as a as a uh, uh, fulcrum. The bottom wheel is acting like a fulcrum, a lever and a fulcrum to bend with. I can do it here too. You can put your hand. That's the fulcrum, and you can bend it like this. Now let's put this back. All right, so we've got it uh, clamped on. It's not perfect, the clamping, but it's pretty close. And we're heading in the same spot again, so we got to do it again. So this is, uh, again, we're taking those baby steps. If you go too far, you're going to get in big trouble. So what's going to happen here is this is going to come out more, and it actually moved down. It was only over here, now it's moved down to here where it's hitting the wire. So that is representative of the fact that this pulls in a little bit just like this. This is pretty straight with a very small crown in here. So everything's looking good. We'll mark that up on both sides again. We'll take this off, hammer it, and then wheel it. Then we do that horizon view, and that we want to get a little bit of rise in the middle here so it all blends in. So it's like five minutes of fitting checking out where you need to be, five minutes of hitting with the hammer, and then five minutes of wheeling. That's a cycle. So we might have to do that until it's done. And it could be five cycles, 10 cycles, 20 cycles, whatever it takes. But we're, on, we're only gonna do those little baby steps. You probably see here why I like the wide wheel, because the wide wheel uh, traverses over all those little walnuts and it would just smooth them down so quickly. If you had a narrow wheel here, uh, it, it can only go two or three inches wide. This wheel, I think, is four and a half inches wide. So It might be more than that. Let me see. What is it? Five and a half inches wide. Uh, I kind of got excited. You said four and a half inches was big, so <laughs> I was going to tell my wife. <laughs> All 
All right, so we'll do a quick fit, and we probably have to set the arrangement. Let's see. That's got to come down because we want to go over this wire. So we got too much bend in here. So let's take some of the bend out. We'll do it this way this time. Just pop that down a little bit. See what that's bad. And you can see if you had a wooden buck, it's not going to tell you anything because this panel is so out of whack at this stage still, it's very difficult to read what you need to do because you can't see it. With the wire form, you'll be able to A, clamp it, and B, see it. All right, we got it clamped up. Same spots again. This spot is widening a little bit. This is where it's turning in. And it's actually getting tight here, which is a good sign. Uh, the worst thing right now is not really this, but the overdevelopment that I had to put in in order to get this overdevelopment that was here before. So this is this has got like three inches of of, of wave in it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna 45 that, and we'll see how much that wave comes out. So that'll be the next step. All right, I'm gonna wheel the wave, but I'm gonna pop these out a little bit more too. Let's see. I see also when you do that horizon view, the horizon view is one of the best tools you have. And actually when you when you turn it like this, see it's looking pretty good right there. When you turn it like this, you can actually see a little bit of a hollow in here. So I can bring that down. It's not going to hit the wires yet, but I can feel it's fat in here. So I'm going to just nail this a little bit too. Again, cautiously baby steps. I could probably go more, but I'll, I'll take my time with that one. Because you don't want to uh, overdevelop it again. In the process of learning, you're going to make a lot of overdevelopment, and you got to learn how to fix that overdevelopment. Otherwise, you're going to throw a lot of panels away. I got a pretty light pressure here, too. It's just enough to smooth the panel out, not to actually blow it out any. So it looks like I probably hit a little bit stronger here. So I'm going to wheel a little bit on either side of that because I, I'm looking at the horizon view right here and I can see it's low here and it's low there. I'm going to pump the pressure a little bit. Same thing here, too. So instead of correcting with the hammer, I'm correcting with the wheel a little bit. And I'm just watching that curve. Brian and I would have this done with 180s montage. All right, now I'm going to attack the uh, the live edge there. I'll give it a, it just it's all 45s. You go up to the edge, but you're dragging it in board a little bit here. It's a 45 degree angle. Teddy. And then we'll go this way. And this front edge is a little live too, so I'm going to see if I can get that to settle down a little.
Now, if I look at the panel, or I put a straight edge across, it's actually better here. If I look at this panel like this, you can see I'm way low in the middle here. So I gotta pump up that middle here. So what do we got for reading? We'll put the, the bar right there. And we've got uh, five eighths, three quarters of an inch right there. We can mark that. There's where we're at. And that has to come out. That's all a result of me wheeling the edges to take that over development out. So basically I seesawed. It was too far one way, and now I'm too far the other way. But it gives you another chance to save the panel. Now I could have made another panel, but... The point of this was to show how to save a panel. So I'll wheel it just a couple times there. Bring that over again. And now we're down to about a half an inch, so let the straight edge be your guide. Now we're down to, we were almost three quarters of an inch. We're down to about a quarter of an inch now. We'll go a little bit more. It's amazing what can happen in a panel in five minutes. So you got to break it down two or three minute increments to, to check your fit. I'm using the, the wheel as an arrangement tool. I'm pulling that side up a little bit. Because in the process of wheeling, it tends to want to go like this and bend around. So I'm taking some of that out. On the pullback, you lift up. I don't think we'll be able to finesse the panel to finish on this video, we'll have to go into video three, I guess. But we're getting a lot closer now. Now let's see what this says. The wave is still on the bottom, but it's only about an inch, an inch and maybe a half now. It was almost three or four inches before. So we're improving. So I'll take lacquer thinner, I'll wash those spots off and remark it. All right, we're gonna mark it up again. And right now it's hitting right about here. So we're right here. What's what this is reading again? This has to be touching there. Let's see. So if we put that about here, see that's going to require it actually being out right there. That's about the same spot on the wires. See, they're, they're touching first three wires, but that's the blend in right here in the back. And that's going to have to come up some more. So if that comes up, this goes down. So we've got to get that to come up a little bit more. It's not bad, though. It's getting close. We're going to come up a little bit more here. Mostly what we've been doing is kind of fitting it this way. But then we will start fitting it this way and this way at those different angles. So we'll wheel this instead of hammering it this time. I could have malleted it, but I'll just wheel it. When you wheel it, the panel will shine up. 
when you mallet it, you get a mottled look to it. Eventually, I want to uh, polish all these panels with a buffer uh, because there's nothing better than having a full shine on there to see all the faults, trying to make it as, as good as possible. I still have a hollow in here that's got to come out. I'll wheel it just a little more. And now that's come right down. There's still a little bit. That's got to still going to hollow over here, so I'll punch that out a little bit. Let's see what that did. A little bit in the middle. Now we got to be really careful that we don't go overboard. We got to leave enough to get all the final finishing in. Again, I got medium pressure. And then let's look at that curve at the top here. Looks a little strong right here where I've been hammering. So I'm going to blast it a little bit on either side of that. But you see the panel starting to show a lot better now. Let me get a little low right there. Let me get that out. There we go. Put that back on. Now it's settling in now. Not perfect yet, but we're getting close. Does look a lot better. Oh, yeah, yeah. Black gave me a vote of confidence. <laughs> All right, so now this is the spot. That's where it's making that turn. That's where it's going to require the most amount of work right now. we got to blow that out. If this comes out, it allows that to go in. So I think this will be the, the last uh, refinement that we'll do on this video. And then the, the final refinement with the the less crown top wheel or bottom wheel uh that's when we'll get this to as close as to perfection as possible that'll be video three in this fixing the old development of the studebaker panel we'll pound uh, we won't pound it we'll wheel this out a little bit all right just like when you were doing the hammering or the malleting you want to get a little bit more where it's hitting the wire, and then you want to blend it in all the way across between these two wires, and then blend it down that way a little bit too, and blend it down that way a little. This is the main culprit right now. That's where it's being hung up. I'm going to rub my hand as I'm wheeling, and I feel a little high spot still here, so that means I got to go on either side of it. I got to even that out so when I rub my hand, I don't feel any bump there. That's blending it.
So let's get the straight edge over here. See what the straight edge says. Okay, we're nice and flat. Remember, you look at back at the first video, this had a tremendous rock right here. So we're gonna need some rock here because that has to dive in. It's about a half an inch of dive on the back there, which means I'm gonna have to come down further here. But that'll be a little later, I think. But we're looking pretty good there. Now I'm gonna come up to here. So what I'm doing here is this needs to come in like this. But your fingers are so nice because it acts just like what's happening. The panel has got to open up like this. So I got to add area in here, and that added area in this spot brings that panel down so it'll meet that back wire. I don't think I'm there yet. I might not get it done this video, but we're getting closer. Let's try another fit. Let me get that clamped on the bottom first, so makes it over that wire. And now you can see that live edge is pretty much gone. There's just a little bit left. That's it. Don't use shrinker to kick shrinkers. You don't need the kink shrinker. The only time you need the kick shrinker is when you've got an edge that you've, you've tripped 90 degrees and you're gonna move that flange. You don't need to put your kick shrinker on finished panels. All it does is mar the panel all up and uh, you should be able to make absolutely flawless panels. Follow the rules of the buck, have a, a nice English wheel, Make sure you get a wide wheel, big difference. So you can see how nice that's starting to fit. It's starting to show pretty good, but we got one more episode to get this to be perfect. There you go. Panel's fitting pretty nice now. Uh, it's probably at about 80%. So we're gonna get it up to 97, 98%. And it'll, it'll show really good and we'll end up with this panel, we'll buff it out and uh, should be pretty much flawless. Uh, but there'll always be some flaws and you can't arrive at perfection, you can only strive for it. So I think that's it for today. Part two, fixing the 1948 Studebaker Virgil Exa design future car and straightening out a panel that was severely overdeveloped. Thanks for watching, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop.